This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Following on from our financial liabilities in the last session, we're now going to move it on to look at convertible debentures, which, if memory serves me right, in F7 was one of the harder aspects. It's still hard now. Uh, it's still a challenge uh, and will be a challenge if it crops up within the exam. So what, 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 what's it all about? Okay, Why was it difficult? The reason why it was difficult was because it was a liability, but it, it was a special type of liability, wasn't it? Whereby a company would borrow money and it, instead of being obliged to pay that money back, what they did is they created a convertible debenture that, that gave the investor, the holder of the debenture, the option instead of to take the cash back at the end of the debt's life would be to take shares instead. Okay. Uh, which can be much more beneficial, can't it? Because if you take on a share as opposed to taking the cash, that share gives you an ongoing interest in the business and gives you the option, doesn't it, to, to, to take more wealth in terms of capital gains and dividends in the future. So it, it does incentivize, if you like, debt holders to try and take the shares. Uh, and therefore, that then means that you don't have to pay the cash back. So it's a very clever way of raising finances and to and, and negate if you like having to pay back huge amounts of finance in terms of cash at some point in the future the issue and the reason why it's complicated is because of the accounting treatment isn't it and what we're going to go through and do is when we look at it we, we look at it based upon substance so so legally it is debt isn't it it is a debenture forget the convertible aspect it's just debt isn't it but when you look at it for, from a substance perspective, yes, there is an obligation to pay back cash because you're going to pay back the coupon rate of interest every year while, while it's in its debt format. So there is a liability to account for. However, there is the potential for shares to be issued in the future. So there is an equity element as well when we look at the substance. So when we go through and look at the accounting, we don't just debit bank credit liability. We use what is referred to as split equity accounting or split equity accounting, isn't it? Whereby we debit the bank, credit your liability, and we also credit a portion of equity, okay? Uh, once you've got the liability element, you, you then just treat that as amortized cost. And then once you've got the equity element, you, you just leave that uh, until conversion happens at some point in the future. The issue is how do we work out the value of the liability? How do we work out the value of the equity? That, that's the challenge and that, and that involved discounting, didn't it? That's why it was a challenge at F7 and why it's still a challenge now at P2. So what you've got in terms of looking at the liability, the way in which we work out the liability, remember this is looking at working out the liability initially. Uh, what you go through and do there is that you assume, so you make an assumption that everybody takes the cash and therefore even though it's a convertible debenture it is just a simple loan okay so we assume there's no conversion takes place we assume that everybody takes the maximum amount of cash possible and all you do is you discount back all of the future cash flows so you discount back the maximum possible amount of cash that's repaid assuming conversion doesn't take place so it's a simple loan what do we discount it back at? Well, just your normal market rates of interest. If it was a normal loan, what would be the market rate of interest? To quote what it says within the standard, we use the rate on similar debt without any conversion option. OK, uh, so we look at what the rates are on the market and we discount it back at that rate. OK, so it was just a simple loan. Uh, what you then go through and do is to work out the equity. Uh, you just go through and work that out the difference between the proceeds and the initial debt elements. So once you've worked out what the debt is, you know how much cash you've raised. You subtract one from the other and that gives you the entry to your equity. OK, nice and simple. Uh, and again, what we said, wasn't it, is the liability is measured at amortized cost. OK, uh, so standard calculations there. Uh, and then the equity element. It is not subsequently changed. We just leave it there for, for forever, essentially. Okay. Uh, just notes. Uh, it says that that if you have issue costs, uh, issue costs associated with associated with the issue are recognised by adjusting the effective rate of interest on the debenture. So you will be given an effective rate of interest uh, without issue costs. You will be given an effective rate of interest with issue costs. 
uh, you would need to go through there and use the effective rate with the issue costs okay uh, and then when you go through a, a look at incurring those issue costs you need to to look at the net proceeds that we go through and receive okay there you have it now i think the best thing to go through and do now is to have a play around with the example isn't it so uh let's have a look at the example uh it says explain how alice should account for the convertible debenture so you panic because you have a convertible debenture it's not just an, a normal debenture within the financial statements uh, for each of the three years okay uh, excellent uh, so what you've got, it says Alice issued 1,004,000 convertible debentures at the start of the accounting year at a par value of $100 or at a par value of $100 million. The key bit that you've got there is that you incur issue costs. Is it there of $1 million? OK, so, so that's going to go through and begin to make things that, that a little bit more of a challenge, isn't it? OK. Uh, the rate of interest on similar debt without the conversion option is 6%. So is that the market rate of interest? And the impact of the issue cost increases the effective rate of interest. So it hasn't given us two effective rates. It's just given us one. Uh, it's converted it, pardon the pump, uh, to 7.67%. It would have been something lower previously. Okay. Uh, because the, the, the issue cost, remember, we look at the net proceeds, so that's going to reduce our starting point. OK, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. OK, uh, so what we can go through and do. Is we can play around with it. Uh, so what we've got, remember, is that we need to go through. And ignoring any issue costs, we're going to debit the bank. Is it there with 100 million, isn't it? Uh, we're going to go through there and credit our financial liability and then we're going to go through and credit our equity uh, and the credit to our equity will be a balancing figure won't it so ignore any issue costs for the time being so the credit to the financial liability we need to work out don't we so what we're going to go through and do is we're going to look at some discounted cash flows aren't we so we're going to look at each of the years is it one two and three uh, we're going to look at the cash flows so this debt if memory served me right was a four percent convertible debenture the par value was 100 million so cash flows for each of the three years will be four million apart from then in the final year which i think it was three years wasn't it okay yeah it said accounting for the three years uh so the, the, the 100 million will be redeemed in three years. OK, uh, the discount factor, the key bit there is that the discount factor is going to be, isn't it, at your market rate without uh, any conversion costs OK, uh, or any conversion to, to equity. Uh, so it's 6 percent, one divided by 1.06. So does that give me, is it 0.943? Uh, does that give me 0 0.890? And then in the third year, 1.06, uh, is that there as 0 0.840? Uh, present value, multiply across, don't we? Uh, does that give me, is it 3.8? Uh, is that 3.6 and is that the 87.4 uh, 87.4 plus 3.6 plus 3.8 does that give me 94.8 okay excellent so if that's the case if that's what my liability element is so that's going to be the liability. If the proceeds were equal to 100 million, then 100 less than 94.8, the equity is 5.2, isn't it? So if I was to go through and put in here, would that be 94.8 million and 5.2? 
million dollars. Remember that there is assuming that there are no issue costs. However, that's not the case, is there? There were issue costs as part of the question. The issue costs were one million. So what we've got to go through and, and do there is that when we go through and look at the issue costs, you pay the issue costs, don't we? So we credit the bank with the one million. What we're going to go through and do is we're going to now debit the financial liability and debit the equity. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to do it in proportion to the value of the liability and the value of the equity, wasn't it? So the liability, remember, that was 94.8 million. So 95%. So is that say 0.95? It is going to go to the liability, and the equity was there, wasn't it? As 5.2 million, so 0.05 million will go there to the equity. Key bit is it a debit to the liability reduces it, and a debit to the equity reduces it as well, doesn't it? So what you will have there is that your financial liability was 94.8. And we're now going to reduce that by 0.95. So 94.8 less 0.95 uh, gives me there is that 93.85. And then on my equity, uh, you had, was it 5.2? That's been reduced by 0.05. Uh, gives me there is that 5.15 okay uh, excellent brilliant okay uh, so the key bit now is to account for the financial liability which starts is it there at 93.85 uh, the equity at 5.15 we do not go through that and adjust do we we leave it there at the 5.15 we do not change it so now we need to account for the liability at 93.85 so we've got the is it our year year one with our brought forward is it of 93.85 the interest expense be careful it is not the six percent but that 7.67% because that goes through there and takes account of the issue costs as well. Remember, we've reduced the value of the liability uh, by the liability proportion of the interest costs, or sorry, of the issue costs. So therefore, we're going from a lower starting point. So to get up to the, the redemption value, we need to go to a higher rate of interest, don't we? And that's 767 per the question. Uh, you've then got, is it your cash that you have then paid to then get you, is it to your carry forward figure? So 93.85 times 0 0.0767. Uh, does that give me, is it 7.20? Uh, the cash that you pay on this debt, it's 4% of 100 million, isn't it? So that's the coupon rate of 4% of the 100 million being the par value, which is nice straightforward because that's just 4, isn't it? Okay. So 93.85 plus the 7.2 less the 4 uh, gives me there is that 97.05. Okay. The journal entries, the interest expense and the cash paid are exactly the same as what we've seen previously. The interest expense goes to the statement of profit or loss and the carry forward goes to the statement of financial position. OK, so uh, at the end of the, of the first year, uh, what you're going to have in terms of your financial statements. So looking at is it your SFP? And is it your statement of profit or loss and the statement of profit or loss? 
You've got your finance cost, haven't we? Which is there at 7.2 million. Uh, on the statement of financial position, uh, what we have there is it your 4% convertible, uh, which is there is 97.05. Uh, so that's within your, your non-current liabilities. And then within your equity, probably within your other components of equity, you've got your equity option. And the equity option was there, was it a 5.15 million? There we go. Uh, you're unlikely to have to carry it on for the full three years. Uh, I think it does say to do that within the question. Uh, all that happens essentially is that you go through there, don't we, and carry things on. Is it there for year two? Is it then for year three? Okay, so it works through year by year. The cash you pay, it is there, is it as four each year? Uh, and again, we assume that it's bog standard debt. So again, we assume that it's there redeemed at 100 again some people will take shares but let's not worry about that this is the way that the accounting treatment works okay uh, you can carry that on and, and hopefully it will go through uh, and, and get you somewhere in the region of around nil when it all completes okay uh, i'll let you do that i'll let you have a play in your own time uh convertible debentures were hard they are now even harder and the reason why they are even harder it is by looking at this issue cost aspect. If there are issue costs, you allocate the issue cost, the liability and to the equity pro rata, uh, the initial value of the liability and the equity. So what we had to go through and do there, wasn't it, is that we went through and worked out the initial value of the liability and the equity, assuming that there were no issue cost so as it was in f7 and then what we needed to go through and do wasn't it is that there were issue costs of a million and you needed to allocate it proportionately uh, to the value of the liability and the equity okay uh, and then once you've done that when you were treating the liability the the important component there was to adjust the interest expense to take account of those issue costs wasn't it okay so here it was 7.67 percent per the question there has been an exam question or part of an exam question like that previously on a big question on financial instruments so, so there's nothing to stop it cropping up again it could crop up as question two or three or it's numbers so it could even be oh heaven forbid uh part of question one within your group accounts imagine the parent having a convertible debenture as complicated as that Let's hope not and let's move on to the next session.